Hello and so welcomes everyone, and Wolf here with more Colat Part 4. On our way to get to another grid bearing. Let us continue. Um, in case anyone hasn't come directly from Part 3, we are going to be taking this route here, travelling south, and I think we need to go somewhere to here. 66.72. Yeah. Should be able to reach it from this point, I'm guessing. Just need to avoid the shadows once again. There might still be a couple in this forest we'll have to keep an eye open for. As long as we don't flash them with our flashlight or get too close to them, they shouldn't really bother us. It's the only times when we get um, like in a, enclosed spaces. What the shadows really are, we still don't rightly know. Sounds like there's one nearby, but I can't quite make it out. That's fine. Cave system was quite eastward. Just here. Yes, it is. Okay, good. But there was a cave. Wasn't there? There was like a waterfall. That we passed earlier. Let's go check that out quickly. I'm kind of curious, just in case there's anything there. Do a bit of sprinting. I think we'll be fairly safe. Yeah, here. I thought this is the way we were meant to be going. Is there anything of interest? I mean, it's not on the map at all. No, maybe not. Oh, well. Oh. What the hell was that? I don't know why something starts whispering to me for no apparent reason. Anything down here? Anything written on the walls? No? Oh well. So I might consider it a waste of a couple of minutes, but in a game like this, I'm quite happy to explore a little. See if there's anything of interest. Um, not here. It's 
a little further down. And then we need to follow it straight and then the first left. Yes. a bit too hard. So it's going to be a couple of turn-offs to the right. In the second turn-off, which is kind of like a cross junction, we should take the left down. Okay. And then we just need to follow that left road quite a distance. Well, that's the first turn-off right away. So it should coil to the right and then left once again. Sounds like there's something rustling. Hello. A guard's confessions. 72 year old Anna N., after years of silence, decided to talk about the events from her past. She told us. I am terminally ill and have nothing to lose. I want people to know what harm had been done, and all this in the name of science. Anna M. described the place. A science research centre where scientists allegedly conducted inhumane experiments on prisoners. There was a special chamber. They had never allowed us to even get close. It was guarded by soldiers. Although I did see some people that were taken there. Not many came back. I kept in touch with one of them. I asked what they had been doing there and why so few came back, out of there alive. He looked at me terrified and said, Anna, are you ever seen nothingness? A deep emptiness with no end? I was there. I stood above the collapsed valley of the universe, on the border between reality and unreality. There is an abyss there, a gigantic well with no bottom, a dark cave of hell, and I felt it. It was drilling in my head, like ticking clock. It looked at me from below. It was sneaking up on me, and slowly started entering me, the darkness. Some time later, the same prisoner gave me a letter to pass on, in which he had begged for help. I was supposed to give it to the press and expose the whole thing, but the letter disappeared. Up until now, I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, they would probably cover up the whole thing. We asked the supervisors of the prison unit, to which Anna L. was subject to, for comment. Vladimir Kronsky, the unit commander, strongly denied such events took place. He also informed us in a short message that NRN was a god but never worked for the above mentioned center because an object that like like that simply does not exist. He sent Anna N's employee record as proof that in the years between 1940 and 1950 she worked in Shuchakona prison also known as special object number 110. She had been let go from this facility due to mental illness. A copy of a health record and mil medical certificate were attached. Yeah, like those couldn't be fabricated. This was located at 4673. And I haven't seen a mark for that yet, so I'll just write that down. In case until we find a mark for it, so we're not crossing it once again. And now we need to travel directly south. Um, so I think it's this way. That's east. That's west. Yeah, okay. This should snake to the right and then the left once again. I'll keep an eye out for any anything written on the walls. Huh. Aha. 
Ah. 69.71. Which is... Right next to where we actually need to be. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sharp right turn. All the way up to a sharp left turn. Hello. We slept in something you could call a hotel. Two persons per bed. We woke up at 9 a.m. It was actually quite comfortable, although it was a little cold because we forgot to close the window vent. We ate breakfast, packed our things, and at 11 a.m. we were ready to go. We set off in the back of a truck, so it was a bit cold. During the ride, we talked about absolutely everything we could think of. On the spot, we spoke with some local workers. I remembered one in particular. He had a red beard. Friends called him Beardman. We cooked and ate dinner, and now we are resting. Half of the group is looking at some maps. The rest are sleeping. I started handling the equipment and writing. It is still a bit too cold. My hands are shaking, but finally, my thoughts are much brighter than yesterday. No creepiness in them whatsoever. There's a long way ahead of us, but the only thing I can feel is excitement. It seems as if the forest is calling us. That beautiful, magical, dark forest. Hmm, dark forest gato. I feel the same way. Oh. Is it me? Has it suddenly gotten darker? There you go. Fifty-eight seventy-one. Fifty-eight seventy-one. Good. So we are here now. We need to travel directly south. 64, 72, 66, 72. We are not that far. And then 69, 71. We are not far at all. In fact, if we go directly south, we will encounter whatever we're meant to find. It looks like a, um, like a hut. It's got the apex shed, um, apex roof and everything. <gasps> Fuck! Well. That was unexpected. I think it just dropped us off exactly outside of where I fell. My question is... How did we fall? Oh! Do you see that? There's another one.
trees. No. There's a note down here. And then we'll turn around. Ah! Dr. Gregor Alawisk's testimony on anom anomaly. We had 0H-91. We have never seen such a thing. The activity was off the scale. Energy readings. It was just beyond any reason. I remember Dr. Petnik. He said he had heard singing. He saw angels appearing from the light. It was clear to us that it was dangerous to stay too close to the anomaly. For too long, but we had to conduct more tests. Therefore, we have a flashing light. God damn it. Can you give me a break here? How do we get up? Oh, there's a bridge there. Maybe we need to swing around, perhaps. Oh, well, this travels up. Okay. Idea where I'm going, but it seems right. Ah, bridge. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. It's like a like a tanner's hut. Like a like, like a trapper. Oh, it could be a tra yeah. That would make sense. And then the traps are Mm. <laughs> Fucking hell, fireman. going on with reality I'm writing with my own blood on a tree my own name Anton no not mine his the sun is just starting to set orange mist orange mist all around I, I see their bodies coming out of the woods I hear a scream a horrific scream of terror is that my voice I think it is Where's Anton? Where did he come from? How did he get in? The sun is just starting to set. He's in me. He's in my head. He's coming in through my eyes. The eyes are windows to the soul. He has no soul. Where is Anton? I am dropping in a bottomless abyss, falling into the past. 
dead and rotting hands are catching me on my way down. I can feel them whisper into my ear. Now you are ours. You will never leave us. I'm calling him. I'm calling Anton. Where is Anton? I don't know. I see nothing. My eyes are overflowing with blood. I have to escape. I have to run away. I have to start running. Time to go. <gasps> Fuck! Okay, you want me to stay? Let's wait. Right here. Right, let's spend a moment. Sixty-two forty-seven. Okay, but fifty-four sixty-one is here. Head directly, basically northwest, and follow the mountains. Is the being still here? No. travel this way I think we need to go this way yes I think this will be right Sixty-seven seventy. Crying out loud, I was, I was trying to keep an eye on my flashlight. Oh, we're going to be in the hut again, aren't we? Yeah.
let's continue exploring around here then if there's one at 6770. We'll continue exploring a little. Before my nerves and my heart give out. See him get round here actually. So I don't think we follow these lines, so we may as well see what else we can discover. Okay. The weather is pretty good. We have the wind at our back. We arranged with the locals that they will give us a ride to the location of the second camp. We helped them unload the carts and waited for the horses. At approximately 4 p.m. we set off to continue our journey. We managed to replenish food supplies so we could eat something on our way there. The horses are moving slowly. It's making me sleepy. It's getting dark. The second camp was an abandoned village. We found a house to stay at overnight. In total darkness, we started setting up a fireplace. Everyone cut themselves on nails sticking out of the boards. Apart from that, everything was okay. Then, it all started. Seventy two sixty four. We'll keep going around because this isn't the end of this road. Let's see if there's anything else here. sign telling us explore 7264. Thank you. <gasps> Crap! Crap! Oh, nuts. I've just got myself hopelessly turned around. I'm not. I'm heading north again, almost. Ah, uh, there's the hut. Bugger. Okay, then fine. We need to head this way. Again. Let's read that in a safer location. So 
someone else talking about the anomalies. Yeah, we dropped down here, I think. Yeah, we encountered one of the anomalies, shadows, at uh, this um, point here. Okay. I don't want to say we're safe. But. So feel free to pause and read it yourself if I get caught here. But we'll give it a try. Anomalies do not exist. When almost 20 years ago I wrote about a strange anomaly occurring in my city, as a reminder I reported spatial distortions in between buildings. They thought I was nuts. Since then mankind has been witness to thousands of strange, mysterious and unexplained events and phenomena around the world. A lot was documented and supported with hard evidence. Unfortunately, in this day, prominent scientists seem not to notice or simply underestimate this issue. I have asked Dr. Jarvis Northam of the, Amer of the American University of Technology and Life Sciences. Anomalies appearing practically around the globe is an undeniable fact. We know that at least several dozen dozens of such events have taken place in Russia and the United States. But we have found we have also received many reports of strange, extraordinary, and sometimes dangerous phenomena. Authorities must stop avoiding this issue because every year we register an increase in these so-called anomalies occurring. I do not know what causes them, but frequently the repercussions are tragic. Add that. Add to that the helpless attempts to cover up these events by the government in particular countries that are just becoming more and more pathetic. In 1998, Kremlin officially denied that the, that the Special Natural Phenomena Research Unit established in the 50s was to deal with the anomalies in any way. So yeah, they had a, a special um, research branch dedicated to researching anomalies and then denied it 40, 50 years later. So we're kind of like here now, I think. So we need to continue going around to the right. I think we're on the right track now though. So like there's another note nearby. Oh, hello. Excerpts from the logbook entries written by Dr. Ivan Wansky. Do you know what we wanted to do? We played gods. Telekinesis, telepathy, group hypnosis, causing mental and physical disorders, creating disintegrating space. Subjects did not even ha like, do not, did not even handle a sample of the radiation. The ones that somehow survived behaved as if possessed communicating with us in different voices, language that we could not even recognize. And then all of them died, one after the other. Some turned into rock and others into ashes. I remember one who levitated, all his limbs twisted and then he froze like that above the ground. A long time has passed, but it still haunts me. I remember it. I see it happening in front of me every night. Did anyone survive? They later told me that nobody did. But I think what the subjects could have survived. Do you have any idea what we have done, my dear Anton?
So maybe the shadow... Is... One of the... Cyan... Ah, crap! Time to go! to finish the work. Oh, his presence is overcoming me. So poor and defenseless. What have they done to you? What harm? There is a place. You were there, and so was I. A, a huge gate. And the creator hidden behind it. Only those few who touched him could understand, but you could. You understood, and I understood through you. Two more red markers to check. For some reason, this feels like a very final place to reach, but apparently not. This um, marker was only the third, after all. And in the distance, we still have that glowing red light. That may be 6247. Potentially. If not. Fifty-one thirty. Or maybe neither of them. Hmm. I don't know. Let me know what you think as always. This of course is Antwolf of Colat. I will see you all in the next video, where we'll go check out the final two um, grid references, as well as try to s discover more of the diary entries, because I would like to see their perspective and what they, ha what happened to them basically. Definitely intriguing. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye now. <laughs>